Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code 1381, design a stack with the increment operation. We want to design a stack which supports increment operations on its elements, and we'll define this using the custom stack class, which is initialized taking a maximum size, which is obviously the maximum amount of elements in the stack. We can also push an element X onto the stack if it hasn't reached its maximum size. We can also pop from the stack to get the top of it, or minus one if the stack is empty. We can also increment, um, we have the increment method, which takes an integer k and an integer value, which will increment the bottom k elements of the stack by val. If there's actually less than k elements in the stack, then we'll just increment all of them. Now, let's think about how we might do this naively. Let's say if we had a stack with the elements 1, 2, 3, and you told me to increment the first three elements by 3. Well, we would just add 3 to all of them. This would become 4, uh, whoops, 5, and 6. Pretty straightforward. But the problem here is that we had to go through every single element and add three to it. So this is going to be potentially a big O of N operation when N is actually given to us as the maximum size of the stack. So we wanna avoid this because this is linear and it's not very uh, efficient. How can we actually do it better? Well, we can't actually do it in log time, but we can actually find a way to do it in constant time. Now you might be wondering how the hell can we do this in constant time? Doesn't really seem possible. And the way that we're going to do this is by being lazy and not actually applying the increments until it's time to pop a value. And we can keep track of all of the increments that should have happened, and then we'll apply them retroactively when it's time to pop an element. That way we can just add the amount of um, increments we needed and not worry about it until we pop. Now let's look at an example to see what this looks like in practice. So let's say we are given an array and we've added some elements to it, two, five, three, and eight. And then we issue the increment command to basically increment the elements from two by four. And we also issue the command to increment one to four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually store a separate array of the same length as the maximum of the array. And what each index here is going to represent the number of increments that need to happen at that uh, element. So for example, the first index here, and actually, well, this is the zeroth index, but the first item in here represents the amount we need to increment the first element. And the second item here represents the uh, how much we need to increment the, um, the second item and so on and so forth for the rest of the array. Now, Let's think about how we want to store our data. So we want to increment two to four, right? So we're going to say, okay, for the, the second element, we need to increment everything by four. So we're going to store a four here to notify that we need to increment this uh, somehow. And then we also have, we want to increment all four of these by one. And so we're going to put in the fourth index here, or the third index really, because this represents the, it's always the index plus one. Um, represents that we want to Im increment everything by one. And notice that we're not actually propagating this through the entire thing because that would again give us big O of n runtime. We just want to store it directly. Now what we want to do is when we get issued a pop command, so obviously we want to pop the eight. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the eight, but we're also going to look at our increment array to see if there's any increments which happened that we haven't applied yet. So what we do is we see that, okay, everything up until the fourth index needed to be incremented by one. So we would return eight plus one equals nine from this call in the pop. Now, obviously this element is now gone and this one, we can't just pop it, but because remember that this still represents elements from zero, so from, from positions one to three, but we haven't um, moved this one yet, right? We haven't applied this one to this one, this one or this one, so we actually need to move it down into the stack. So the new uh, stack for the increment will now look like zero, four, one, All right? Now, when we're asked to pop the three, we again pop the three and we check, is there any increment we didn't apply? It's just the one, right? So we can add the one to it and this would become four. And this makes sense because obviously we wanted to increment everything from one to four by one. So this should have been nine, this should have been three. The tricky part is now when we have the overlap of these intervals, how are we gonna handle it? So again, now that we've popped the three, that no longer exists. And now this one will no longer exist, right? But we still need to apply 
this extra one because we first need to increment everything from the first element to the second element by four. And then the second one will also be incrementing everything from four to one. So we actually need to apply an increment of five to these first uh, two elements. So now when we get here and we're moving down our increment, we need to add it to whatever number is here, similar to what we did in the last one. So the increment array now looks like zero, five, right? So now when we pop the five from the array, obviously we pop the five and we check at the same kind of index in the increment array, we're gonna add the five because we still need to apply that. So then we return 10. And of course we repeat the process now that we've gotten rid of the five we can also get rid of it from here and move it down of course we need to add it to the previous element so our increment array now just looks like five right then when we pop our final element the two then of course we do two plus five equals seven and there you go so that is the way that we're going to use this increment array to basically store in a lazy manner how we uh, want to increment our elements and then when we actually pop them we'll check in this array for the increments that should have happened we'll apply them and then move that increment down uh, because obviously if you're incrementing everything up until the kth index then everything from k and then k minus one k minus two k minus you know three and on and on uh, also needs to get incremented because they don't give us a range they just tell us everything up until a certain index so that is the general approach, and that's how we're gonna actually achieve big O of one runtime, because we don't have to update the elements every single time. All we have to do is pop from the stack and then just add, and this way we will get big O of one runtime for basically all of our operations. So now let's go to the code editor and see how we're gonna type this up. I promise it's really not that bad. Okay, we're in the code editor, let's type this up. Remember that we're gonna need basically two stacks here to keep track of our result as we're processing it. Uh, the first one we'll just call stack and we'll initialize this to be all zeros of size max size. And we're gonna have the increment stack and this is again just gonna be zeros times the max size. And we're also gonna have a helper function, or sorry, not a helper function, a helper variable called self.top and this is just gonna keep track of the top of the stack index because we're going to be needing it and it's easier than writing len of the stack each time. Let's just keep track of it manually uh, and it'll be easier for us. And obviously it's minus one because there is no element in our stack. So let us now define uh, some of the methods we want. Let's start with push. So basically we only want to push to our stack here if the stack has space. So if it's less than max size, right? So basically if uh, self.top, which remember represents the top, the last index in the stack, is actually less than um, the length of self.stack uh, minus one, then we want to add this element. And remember the, the stack is actually set to be the, the length. So it's already the, the length we want it. It's not gonna grow as we add elements. It's just gonna stay fixed at max size. So while, um, so yeah, basically if we have space, then we wanna add our element. So obviously we're now adding an element. So the index, which represents the top of the stack uh, is gonna grow by one. And we also wanna add uh, the element to the stack, right? So we're gonna say self.stack of whatever self.top is, uh, is gonna equal X. Because remember that self.top represents the index of whatever the top of the stack is. You could have the case where you have some elements in the stack, but there's also zeros, right? So we don't wanna just insert it at the top, we wanna to insert it at wherever the actual top of the stack is. So that's again why we're using top uh, for that utility. Okay, so that is uh, the push method, relatively straightforward. Now let's actually increment, uh, let's do increment because I think it's a little bit easier. So what we wanna do is if there's actually something to increment, um, so basically if we have something in our stack, so if self.top is actually greater than or equal to zero, so basically if we have something in our um, uh, stack, then we want to increment it, right? We don't wanna just increment if there's nothing in it because that doesn't apply, right? If the stack is empty, we can't increment anything. So we're gonna say that the index that we wanna apply our increment is, is gonna be the minimum between self.top and k minus one. And the reason we do this is if there's actually less than K elements in the stack, then we just wanna do however much is in there, which is um, whatever self.top is. 
So then we want to do cell. And the reason actually we have k minus one is if you remember the increment array, the, the zeroth index represents the first element. So everything is always one less than whatever the kth um, element is in the main stack to represent that obviously the first one in the increment stack, the zeroth index corresponds to the first index. The, yeah, the first item, the index one represents the second item and so on and so forth. So now that we have that, we want to increment uh, whatever the value is at the index um, and we want to add to it the value of the value, right? Because you, you we can apply uh, multiple increments to the same value. So that's why we just want to get the index and then add whatever value is already there. Okay, so now for the fun part, we have the pop one. So obviously the first thing to check is if uh, self.top is less than zero. So obviously this happens when we haven't put anything into our stack. Um, so this means that there's nothing in the stack. We simply just return one, uh, minus one. So otherwise, what we need to do is now calculate the result of our uh, comp computation here. So the result is going to equal to self.stack of whatever is at the top of the stack, right? Because we're popping that top element plus whatever increments we need to apply for that element. So we're going to do self dot uh, increment of whatever self dot top is. So we will basically apply um, those two together and add them, right? Cool. Now what we need to do is now that we've popped the increment and we've used it, we need to retroactively apply it to the next level down in the stack so that way we can keep track of um, those propagations and we'll just do it in a lazy manner uh, when we pop, which is now. So if, if there's actually something left for us to propagate down, so basically if self.top is greater than zero, then we want to say that self.increment of self.top minus one, um, we want to add to it the, the value that we basically just used. So self.increment of self.top. So basically what we want to do is just remember when we had the increment, if it was like zero for one and we just used the one, well, we still need to apply that one to the last element. So that's why we're applying whatever is there plus the last value we just used. So in this case, our new array would then become zero and five. And actually this will become zero because um, we're not actually getting rid of those elements. So, okay, now that we've done that, we need to re reset the increment for this position because we've now just used it. So we're gonna say self.increment of self.top. Um, we are going to just set this equal to zero because we have now used all of the increments for everything up until this index uh, for I guess that particular index. Uh, we still might need to do it for below it, but for this particular index, we've used it all up. So let's just set it back equal to zero. And obviously we've now popped an element from our stack. So let's decrement our top because now the element is going to move down where we are. Uh, and the last thing we want to do is just return our result. Now that should be it, uh, barring any little mistakes here. So let's just cross our fingers and looks good to me and it is accepted. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so time and space complexity. Obviously all of these elements, um, all of these operations, all we're doing is you know, setting a value, popping a value, adding some things. There's nothing here that is anything but O of one. So all of our operations here uh, for the time complexity, all of them are big O of one. For the space complexity, it's obviously gonna be big O of max size because we could potentially just have to store all of those um, elements. So that is the, the max size, right? You could just end up having to push a bunch of elements and never get any pop commands. Uh, so you'd end up storing, you know, basically up until max size in the worst case. So that is how you solve this problem. Again, this is one where if you haven't seen the solution before, you probably aren't gonna come up with this. Most people will just increment the stack elements um, at each iteration. That's a big O of n solution, but coming up with this, unless you're 200 IQ, um, yeah, you're, you're probably not gonna figure this one out. This is such a weird solution. Uh, I, I definitely didn't the first time I saw this. I just looked at the solution and said, wow, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video helps. Hopefully you learned something today. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a comment, sub to the channel, and I will see you hopefully tomorrow for the next Leet Code Daily Challenge. Bye.